Well, folks, here it is. Uh, it's time for me to render my opinion on this board. I'm going to give you a more in-depth rundown on the ins and outs of this board. I've built it out. I've flown with it a little bit, and uh, I feel like I have a pretty good read on it and can help you make a decision as to whether it's one that you want to buy. There are many, many good things to say about this board. For example, this thing they've done with the 5 volt and 3 volt and the PPM and the serial receiver jumper is very clever. It lets you hook your receiver up to these three pins and you don't have to fuss about with, you know, uh, S bus here or CPPM there. You just have receiver, your voltage, your receiver voltage and ground. You plug the receiver in and then you just do this here and everything is good to go. That's very nice. If you have a serial receiver, you you just jumper the three volt. If you have uh, if you have a five volt receiver or a regular receiver, you jumper the five volt and you're good to go. That's very clever, very handy. Makes the install a lot uh, sort of simpler, cleaner, and and nicer. Uh, it is very nice that this board powers the receiver from USB. That's fantastic. It means that you can test out your modes. You can check your receiver endpoints. You can do all of those things without plugging in a flight battery and worrying that you're going to accidentally spin up the props on your desk and have the, uh, the, the flying blender of death going into your face or your computer monitor or anything like that. Uh, and, you know, oh, you're always supposed to take your props off, but many of us don't because we're, well, we're lazy and in a hurry. And this lets you test those things out without having to take your props off and without taking a risk uh, with your safety. That's a very nice feature, very good feature. The fact that the uh, motor headers are at the corners cleans up the build substantially. I know that's a small thing, right? But it, it's still a very nice thing. The fact that it's got a bootloader button, well, especially since you're going to have to use that bootloader button, some people have to use it uh, quite a lot. Uh, some people only have to use it the first time they flash. Some people seem to have to use it more often than that. So the fact that you're not having to short bootloader pads, but they have this nice button here, that's definitely a big plus. And, and if I had to just sort of give this board a general compliment, I would say that overall it is just very well thought out and very well laid out. And I found it to be uh, very pleasant to install. No fiddling about with where am I going to get the pin headers? Where am I going to, how am I going to fit it all together? Like they do sometimes the nays. I'm going to install these pin headers facing inward and these pin headers facing east and these ones on the bottom of the board, blah, blah, blah. With the, especially with the edge launch pins here, uh, it makes for a very low profile and very clean install. The other positive thing I have to say about this board is that, you know, I've done a little bit of interacting with some people from Lumineer. And I have to say that I'm really, really impressed with their devotion to, to quality. The board that they sent me initially was a not for sale board and it had the wrong button on it. And this has been posted about over in the Lux, fret, Lux thread, uh, Quad 007 posted about it. They, the Chinese manufacturer had swapped out the whatever 60 cent Panasonic button that, for the bootloader that they specified with like a, a, you know, a one cent cheap knockoff button. And, and, you know, you might never have noticed but it didn't have the same tactile feel and it wouldn't have the same service life. They, they just said, no, forget it. We're not selling these boards. They just put them all in a warehouse somewhere and gave them to people like me, but they won't sell them. And, and I've had other conversations with him about other products that they sell where he's talked to me about the, the level of detail that they put into their products. And, uh, and so if that's the kind of thing that has value for you, then, then this is certainly a product that you might feel good spending your money on. That being said, not everybody feels like that has a value that is commensurate with the price that comes with these products. And so some people prefer to buy something cheap uh, from, from Banggood and take a chance that it's going to fail right out of the box and, you know, then get on with their life. So that's your call to make. Okay. These are all the positive things. These are all positive things I have to say about the board. So now what's the flip side? Well, the elephant in the room is the 6500 gyro uh, that they put on there, which has a worse noise spec than the 6050 or the 6000 gyro used in some of the other boards. And and I, ha if I had to sum up my thoughts on that, I would say that I think there's a difference when I look at the black box traces. I think that they look noisier, and 
I can't say this with absolute certainty because I haven't done a real scientific, like the real most scientific thing for me to do would be to take the Lux out of this exact same copter, put a Naze 32 in it or, uh, or something like that, and, uh, and, and look at the black box Lux. And I haven't done that because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a busy person and I have other things to do, and etc. cetera. Uh, and maybe I'll do that someday and, and come back and, and to revise this opinion or ex ex expand on this opinion. But my gut feeling is that these traces are noisier. The amount of D-term uh, motion that I see and the ability to raise the D gain without introducing noise, it seems like there's more noise in here than a normal than I would normally expect to see. And and just to sort of second my opinion, I bounced the black box log that I have off of Boris. And I said, Boris, listen, you see a lot more of this than I do. You have a lot more experience with beta flight than I do. Does this look like noisy to you? And he said, yeah, it looks a little noisier. So I'm going to tentatively conclude that the worst noise spec on the 6500 and the 9250 gyro does have a noticeable effect on the tuning. But here's, the, here's how I qualify that. I believe that it is something that could be tuned around. So for example, you might not be able to run gyro LPF off, for example, on this board. I'm, I don't, take, don't take that completely literally, it's just an example. You might have to run gyro LPF equals 188 hertz instead of off. Or you might not be able to run D-term filtering turned off. You might need a little bit of D-term filtering to clean up those traces. And that's not a deal breaker for a lot of people for whom the assets of this board outweigh that. I mean, if we were to go back six months and say, you have to fly with gyro LPF equals 188, that's we were all flying with gyro LPF equals 42, right? And we, we thought that was good. And of course, now we know that 188 or off is better. But I feel like the difference between, say, gyro LPF equals 188 and gyro LPF equals off, or D-term filtering equals off versus D-term filtering at 50 hertz or 40 hertz, I feel like those are very small incremental differences and not enough to just wholesale reject a board that uses a 6500 or the 9250 chip uh, be out of it. I feel like they're, they're, the, that board is going to tune a little different, but at the end of the day, when I fly it, I'm not going, geez, oh God, I need the P gains to be higher. I need the D gains to be, it feels so unresponsive. No, it, it feels great. It feels great. And so I think if you are the kind of pilot who wants to just absolutely shave your copter to the, the, to the bone, you need every last bit of sharpness, every last bit of latency. You want your P gains and your D gains, you need them to be as high as they can be. Then, then you would probably want to pass on this board or any other board that uses uh, the 6500 or the 9250. You would want to pass on that because you are going to get, you know, a half a millisecond or a millisecond less latency uh, out of the 6000 or the 6050 because you'll be able to run it at a, a slightly less filtering, for example, or slightly higher P or D gains without without accentuating the noise. But for the rest of uh, for the rest of us who are probably not at that level. If you look at this board and you like it and you want to get it, I wouldn't tell you not to get it. And that's that's what it comes down to for me. Uh, personally, if I was spending my own money, this is not the board I would buy uh, because I'm the guy who wants that last 3% of performance, right? I'm that guy. Uh, but like the SP3 mini board from uh, from Hydra with the onboard SPI SD card reader, I'm probably I would take I would fly that in a second because I do black I do so much black box logging and I would accept the slightly uh, noisier uh, traces and slightly more filtering in exchange for a feature like that that's like a killer feature that I would absolutely like the other thing that I think is really critical that you know about this board is that as near as I can tell it won't run soft serial where are the pins for soft serial they're not there so you have three UARTs that you can work with. And if you need more than three UARTs, it's not, this is not the board for you. Uh, and my guess is that the reason that you don't have those pins is because they use those pins for SPI so that they could have the 8 kilohertz gyro. Oh, hey, that reminds me. Well, so you can tell I don't script these things. If you want to do 4 kilohertz gyro sync, you can do it on this board, and that's a plus. If that's a killer feature for you, this board is a great choice. Uh, four, it can do 4 kilohertz gyro sync, whereas many of the other F3 boards out there won't go faster than two kilohertz. So that's good. 
But if you want to do soft serial, this board doesn't have the pins for it, doesn't have the pinouts. So for example, if you just absolutely have to do SBUS plus smart port telemetry plus black box plus an OSD, that's four devices. You don't have the you don't have the serial interfaces to do that. Uh, so so you gotta decide whether you're like for for example, in a case like that, I would just give up the smart port telemetry. I mean it's nice to have, but the uh, X4R SB receiver has an analog voltage port, so you can run a voltage divider, run analog input, and do your VBAP monitoring that way. At that point, you've got VBAP monitoring on telemetry and RSSI monitoring on tele telemetry. What else are you really paying attention to in that telemetry? Most of us aren't running a current sensor over telemetry. Most of us are doing an OSD that way. Or if, if you want to do telemetry and OSD and black box and SBUS, you've got the OSD as your primary sort of monitoring. And the smart port telemetry is probably just a bonus. So you could probably give that up and not need all four of those. But if you absolutely need more than three serial devices, this board's not going to do it for you. Oh, yeah. One more thing. There's one more thing to say. And that is the virtual COM port and the DFU driver. So in order to flash this board the, with Betaflight the first time, you have to install the DFU driver. Some people need to use the bootloader slash DFU interface more often than that. Other people, once they flash it the first time, they can flash it normally via the, the, the virtual COM port interface. And many people have no trouble at all with that. I had a little bit of trouble until I figured out that I had to reboot my computer after installing the driver. But it's, it's, if you look on RC Group's some people are having just loads of trouble getting the DFU driver and the virtual COM port to work right. And most of these people are running Windows, I have to acknowledge. As near as I can tell, it works pretty seamlessly on Unix and Mac OS, which is really Unix. Uh, but hey, a lot of people run Windows. And despite the fact that the majority, probably the large majority of people have no trouble with this, the fact that some people just can't seem to get it to work right through no fault of their own. I don't know. They're running some they're running Windows 7 and it doesn't work. I don't know. They're they're running something about their computer. Their DFU dri drivers got screwed up. Like on my Tyrannus won't connect to my main desktop PC. I have to go to my laptop uh, if I want to back up the model memory, for example, or access it via the Tyrannus configurator desktop OpenTX thing. Uh, and I don't I've tried. I've tried and tried to fix it. I cannot fix it. The driver is screwed up. And I just have to use my laptop, and I just live with that. If that was happening to me with my with my board, with my flight control board, I would be really mad. I would be really frustrating, and I wouldn't like it. So I, any any rundown of this board has to acknowledge that some percentage of users have a really hard time getting the communication with this board and their PC working correctly. Alrighty, well that's my rundown of this board. I do appreciate Lumineer sending it out for me to work with, despite the fact that I didn't change my opinion about whether it would be like my favorite board and the one I would spend my money on today. Uh, getting to work with it definitely gave me a deeper understanding of its pros and cons in a way that you don't get just by running down the specs like I did in my roundup. Uh, and I hope that I've been able to share that insight with you in a way that helps you decide if the pros and cons of this board make it the right one for you. Because despite the fact that I think I'm brilliant and know everything, uh, not everyone agrees with my opinions, and some people feel differently than me. I don't know. It's very confusing sometimes. So, uh, you know, there are no boards on the market right now that have everything you could possibly want with no compromises. Someone invent that, and then everyone will buy it. I wonder why they haven't done that yet. Probably a good reason. So every board has compromises, every board has pros and cons, and hopefully after seeing this stuff, you can decide whether the pros and cons of this board make it the right board for you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.